Hello, this is Jesus Lagarta, and welcome to this introduction to Paraver, where in the following minutes I will try to introduce the characteristics, the basic uh, fundamental features of Paraver, the philosophy behind it, and how to use it. And uh, uh, I will give a small demonstrations of some of those features, but I will give you links to further material in case you are interested. And I will be starting by a presentation of the of the basic concepts uh, in a small presentation, and later I will switch to to a demo. The first uh, thing I want to present is uh, the whole BSC tool framework, which includes a, a tracing package, which we call Extrai, which captures the behavior, the the, the actual behavior of a parallel program when running in a parallel machine into a trace file, which we call a Paraver trace file. And Paraver, which is the subject, the topic of today, is the main browser to analyze these, these traces and try to obtain insight about the behavior of the application. The BSC tool framework has uh, many other features to enable, for example, this path here allows for what if analysis, there are paths here that allow for detailed analytics using clustering techniques, tracking and uh, modeling other techniques to do performance analytics. In a sense, I would like to vindicate the role of the performance analysts and we think BSC tools is, is a framework that has a huge potential and flexibility for that. And the core of it is, is the, the browser, the visualizer parameter. Before describing it, I will just mentioned the trace. The trace is, is a, a recording of the activity of the program. So it's a ASCII, an ASCII file with uh, lines. And essentially, each line has a timestamp in nanoseconds and has sequences of uh, events uh, descriptions characterized by a type describing type, the type of event and a value associated to that type of event. And at a given point in time, at a given timestamp, there can be several of those. This is the fundamental uh, information that is stored in Paraver. Of course, this is represented on a per thread level within an MPI number, specific MPI processes and within specific MPI applications. So it, the tool can capture the or the, dis the browser can display traces in describing multiple applications, each of them being MPI plus OpenMP, for example. The trace that we see here is a symbolic a numeric trace. It's what is essentially needed for the analysis, but uh, the tools pro also produce symbolic trace fi uh, files that describe the relationship between the events used in the previous type, the event numbers used in the previous type, and the se actual semantics of those events. This is the trace. What is Paraver? Paraver is, is just a browser that lets you uh, visualize those traces, yes, but not only visualize, lets you manipulate them, lets you filter, cut, combine. And uh, those traces are, as we said, sequences of timestamped events which uh, represent, in our typical case, represent performance analysis data, but which in reality, uh, the browser itself has no semantics in it. So it's kind of agnostic of the actual semantics. So the tools happen to be used for uh, performance analysis, but we have used them in, for performance analysis of parallel programs, but we have used them for analyzing, uh, I don't know, the behavior of uh, machine tooling machinery in in heavyweight uh, industrial sites. Okay. One important or two important character, the most probably the most important characteristic of the tool is that this has a, an underlying mathematical formulation that I would like to to give a hint to you because it's a fundamental characteristic of the tool. Another thing that we try to encourage in the use of the tool is to follow a multispectral philosophy. It's the same thing that people do when looking at the stars or flowers, uh, with looking at them with uh, different spectral bands. 
because there is different in kind of information captured by each of these spectral bands, which can then be combined into different insights. So something similar we'd like to, this philosophy is what we'd like to, to apply for when looking at traces. We'd like to see views that show a given type of information, different views that show another type of information, and leverage the human mind, to the, hum the ability of the human brain to correlate those uh, those things. And this is the fundamental characteristic description of the of the paraverse slide. So this will be paravering one slide. And essentially, what we the fundamentals is what we display are what we analyze are functions of time. They are piecewise constant functions of time. So in, in a given interval, they have a given constant value. In the next interval, a different constant value. These intervals are not necessarily uniform. They can be sometimes very short, sometimes very large. Actually, they essentially depend on what is the activity when the program enters or exits certain functions, for example, MPI calls. What we have to do is uh, one of these functions for every thread, and we want to display that. So we display the function of time, one row per function, and uh, instead of we can paint it as a function of time, but we have two basic ways of rendering that information. One of them is if the values are discrete categorical values, so we translate them by a color code table, translation table, and we redisplay them as colors. If the values actually have a very large dynamic range, they represent, for example, cache misses, which can be very low or can be very high then we represent them or we display them, we render them with a, a gradient coloring scheme, which in our case is typically from a light green color in the case the value is very small to a dark blue color in the case the value is very large. This uh, display actually has to paint many functions of time in a limited space, many functions of time and actually, even a long time, if many a single thread, a single function of time may want to display many colors in a, or many values in, into a single pixel. So there is an important characteristic here, which is the ability of doing nonlinear rendering. As in this deep learning these days, where do we get the, ins the, the actual insight, the actual intelligence it comes from nonlinear nonlinearities in the process. So Similarly, the idea is in order to convey information from the internal machine to the human, to the, to, to the mind of the analyst, uh, a nonlinear rendering capability is a very important aspect. This, what this displays is what we said, this rendering is of these different functions of time. What we have, how do we produce these functions of time? There's actually two modules in Paraver that produce them. Out of the trace file, there is a first module that selects a subset. If we are interested in cache misses, only the cache miss events. If we are interested in MPI calls, only the MPI calls events. So what we see here at the output of this module is like a filtered subtrace of the original one. The semantic module is uh, what generates out of those records, those, those timestamp records, generate the actual values that stand for the different, in, and, and that uh, are taken by the function of time at the given point in time till the next point in time. This semantic module is extremely flexible. It actually is, has, you can operate functions, you can compose functions, you can derive. So it's a, it's a very powerful analytical module, model which actually lets you off uh, the raw data to abstract any kind of uh, mm, semantic function, any kind of function encoding a given uh, metric or characteristic. So this is about timelines, describing or painting timelines. This only other display that Paraver has is tables. And they are very tightly linked. From every timeline, you can generate a table. The table kind of gets rid gets rid of the of the time dimension that we have in the timeline, and displays for every thread also, but displays one column 
corresponding to each possible value of the timeline. So this one actually was MPI call, so here there will be one column for every possible MPI call. And inside, in every entry, in every cell, there is a statistic which is computed for that cell whenever that cell is inside. That thread is inside the given MPI call. The very same mechanism can be used to generate out of functions which have a much larger dynamic range histograms. The only difference is that here there is one column per value here, per value in the original timeline. In this case, there's one column per range of values. There is a bin in the histogram. So for every bin in the histogram, there is one, one column, but the mechanism is the same. In reality, these are the fundamental concepts that I think is very important to understand when using Paraver. And I will try to give you the examples and a deeper perception of this by looking at an actual example. Just to mention that, of course, these setups of the of of this thing, which may end up being actually in some cases cumbersome, complicated, they are, can actually be saved into configuration files, so it's just a matter of loading and restoring configuration files and those views pop up immediately. This is actually the mechanism that we provide. We provide the instrumentation package, as we said. We provide you have Paraver, and we provide configuration files that for the standard regular analysis might be more than enough. Of course, you can generate your new ones. You can look at more elaborated metrics that might be of interest for you and you can actually save that and even these configurations files can be used for cooperative analysis between different partners in different sites can be used for sharepoint in your analysis can be used for reporting bugs to us if you think there is you should be seeing something and that is not what you're seeing so it's it's a kind of a domain specific language for for this uh, browsing these functions of time. In a sense, I would like to see Paraver as a probably mix between, I don't know, between Google Earth and Excel, a mix between those two things for timestamp series of uh, data. When uh, I will look, we will look at the detail at the example, but essentially when I mean Multispectral timelines, probably something I was referring to something like this. You have one reality, one run with a given number of processors for a given amount of time. And you look at different views, each of those representing one metric or one type of information. For example, MPI calls here, the length of the computations here, the instructions per cycle, or who which routine did call a given MPI call or what were the L3 cache misses. You can start uh, digging down here and trying to see correlations and uh, why is this IPC bad is because you can speculate about these things. So the browser lets you do that is uh, what you can do. I'm not going, I will show in the examples this. The same thing happens for profiles and for histograms that I have mentioned. The important thing is uh, the idea is this is nothing but a tool. Mm -hmm. The idea in kind of scientific method is you you understand you look at your systems, you try to observe behaviors, you try to generate hypotheses for why in those behaviors, and you try to validate. And the main important job of tools is to let you validate those things, let you obtain the quantitative and qualitative and quantitative data that uh, helps sustain uh, a given hypothesis. So this is what the browser is. The only in in our case, the only question is: Do I have? Do we have? If if you make a hypothesis and for validating it, the question is: Do you have the required information in the in the trace? If you do have it, the next question is: Is there a, one of the standard configuration files that we provide sufficient to expose that um, that information? And if not, can we can can you generate new config new files, new configuration files that would expose that metric? And uh, 
That's a very long loop, very deep loop. That there's always a next question to answer. There is always a next uh, uh, thing to look at. But uh, what we claim is that with the flexibility of Paraver, you can really drill down that that, that loop, uh, many different, many levels in in, in that loop. Just uh, in case you want, after the demonstrations, you want to look at a little bit more of some additional tutorial, I give you this information here. You will have this available in the web page of the POP uh, project.